we folded over this long edge, finger pressed it, then proceeded with the two short edges, also finger pressed those. And if you really run your, fin your fingernails along the edge, you'll basically... We folded a little bit over of the right side of the material. We're going to push it down with our fingers, and then you're going to pinch it, and you're going to finger press it. The next step is that we're going to use our common pins and on the sides that are folded over you're going to take one of your pins and you push it through the material straight down then you bend it upwards and then push it through the material again. We're going to use all four pins. We're going to go down the other edge of this and we're going to push it through, bend it up, and then pierce it through. Keep turning it. I'm going to start on this side. Push it through, move it up, and gently push it through. Make sure you don't stab your finger as you do this. And then if you have any little raw edges popping up, you can kind of fold them in. Last pin. Pierce it through. Move it up. Bend it through. Next we're going to get our thread out. So when you look at your spool of thread, which is in your small parts bag, on the sticker at the top, most likely, there's a little notch. It's hard to see in my white thread because it's a white spool. But if you lift the sticker a little bit, you'll be able to see the end of the thread and pull it off. Now we want to make sure that we have a piece of thread that is going to be a good workable length for us. A good rule to go by so that it doesn't get terribly knotted is that if it's two lengths of your arm from your wrist to the inside of your elbow. So I take the thread, I'll grab the end of it, and I will go up to my elbow one time and I let go, and then I go grab a little more and I go up from my inside of my elbow bow the second time and I'm going to cut it right about here and that way you'll have a good length to work with. Alright, we're going to get one of our sewing needles out and be careful with these because they're very hard to see once they're dropped on the floor and you don't want any pets or humans to hurt their feet on these needles. So what I normally do is I will take the end of my thread and if it's looking really fuzzy I might cut it off with my scissors or maybe um, get it a little wet. I'll just stick it in my mouth and pull it out. Not the most hygienic thing probably to do during Corona but these are your bean bags and you're going to use them. So you're going to basically thread the end through the eye of the needle. And it might take a few times. Once it pokes through a little bit, grab it with your fingers and there you go. If you have a really hard time with this, this would be a good thing to go ask your adult for help with. Once it is through, you're going to pull a bit of a tail through. You'll have one really long end and one shorter end. Okay, now we need to knot the end of your string 
So you have your short end here and your long tail. So what I like to do is a French knot. So I'm pulling the long end of my thread. I'm going to stick my finger out like this and you see how the thread lines up with it. I'm going to pinch it. Then I take my needle and I'm going to put the sharp side up right there. Now I'm going to pinch that needle. I'm going to take the long working end of my thread and I'm going to go around the needle five or six times. One, two, three, four, five, six. Pull it down and then at the very tippity top of the thread I'm pinching, I'm putting my thumbnail there not on the sharp part but just below it and I'm going to push the needle up wiggle it through. I'm going to continue to pinch and I'm going to let the the thread slide through. I have to give it a little bit of a wiggle to get it through. Now I'm going to pull and try to basically keep the other thread from getting knotted up as it goes through. Pull, 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 pull and then you have a French knot at the end. Where you start sewing is going to depend on whether you're a right-handed person or a left-handed person. I'm a right-handed person so I'm holding the work in my left. If I were a left-handed person I would turn it and here's our folded seam and I would go this direction. But the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my needle and you see how there's this nice little little gap in there I'm gonna pierce it through that's coming out the end and I'm going to pull it in there whoops I got a little bit of my tablecloth in there alright so the knot will be hidden on the inside and then I take this little piece of the tail and I tuck it in there. Alright, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to catch on to the edge of the material furthest away from me and then I'm going to poke through the material closer to me and push and then make sure your thread's straight before it goes through and pull and if you have to help the thread stay straight down here so I like to put a little pressure on the thread that the length that I'm pulling through because you see how it keeps it nice and straight here and just straighten it out and then that's your first one alright so what you're going to do is we're going to continue to go all around this edge and make sure you have my thread almost fell out of my needle so Make sure you have enough of a tail on the needle part so that it doesn't fall out of your needle because it's really hard when you have to keep re-threading your needle. All right, let me do a close-up again so you can see how the stitches are going. Okay, so I'm to where this pin is. I'm going to take this pin out and I'm going to reposition it a little further down and get it out of my way. Be careful not to poke yourself with it.
I'm starting to approach my corner. As I've worked, I took a couple of the pins out and I promptly put them back into the card they came in and that way I can keep track of them. So we are going to continue as we get to the corner and what I do a lot of times is I will take my needle and I kind of just push down these little corners that are popping out because I want them to be on the inside of the project if I can. It does not need to be perfect. These are just going to be toys for when you're ready to use them with your cornhole. So continue to pierce through both pieces of material. That's what you call it when you're going through with a needle is you're piercing it. Try to keep your fingers out of the way. But every person I know who sews, every once in a while you might poke yourself. And it's really not that big of a deal. Um, just make sure if you do that you go get a band-aid. You have your first aid kits. But the whole point, no pun intended on the whole point, but the whole idea is that we do this safely. So as I go around the corner, I want to make sure I go right through the corner and then I simply turn the material and then I'm going to continue all the way along this end edge and when I get to the raw edge the part that where you see the the thread sticking out of then we are going to stop and fill our bag with beans I've been sewing for a little while and my thread started to do this. It twirls around itself. So what I will do for that is I'm going to hold this up in the air and I will have my needle held over and I'm just going to let it untwirl itself. And then it should be a little bit easier and then sometimes I will even Pull, pull on the thread and help it untwist itself. So that should help you with that. I've arrived at my edge, my corner, and what I'll end up doing is going through one last time. Now, but I want to knot it this time. So I'm going to pull on the thread. I'm going to straighten that out first. Pull on the thread. Pull till it's almost all of the way through. Then I'm going to go through the loop that's there and pull down tightly. I usually knot things two times just because I feel like they're more secure that way. Pull on the thread. I have a loop left. Go through the loop. And pull tightly. At this point, I'm going to take my scissors. And I'm going to carefully snip off my thread. And then I have a couple of really long strings here, too. That I don't want to deal with anymore. They're getting in my way. And then now we are ready to fill our bag with beans. All right, campers, so in your mailing box, you have a paper bag that is taped closed. This has pinto beans in it. So I want you to take the tape off and you can actually leave it on the edge there. If you want, you can reseal. And basically you have beans in here. You have more probably than you're going to need. Fold over a little on the top. Fold over on, the, on each edge. And then you can see that once again the raw edge is going to be folded down and it's going to be stuffed on the inside. That way when we start to sew, we will only see the nice edge of the fabric. All right, 
So now I'm going to load my beans in. And don't feel like you have to have them completely bursting with beans. You have more beans than you're going to need. At least I believe you do. I measured them out. So that's probably pretty good. To get a little closer as I'm going to make this close up. So pull down the raw edge and then make the folded tops meet up. Alright, you're going to take your pins again. You have all sorts of colors in yours. But, um, and you're going to push it through both layers of fabric. Then you're going to make it dive back down again and out. And I'm going to do three on the top of this to make it as easy as possible to hold this stuffed bag close. And I pull it out a little bit to get the material taut. Nice and tight. Okay. If you need more thread on your needle, this would be a good time to do that. I'm going to show you how to do that knot again. I have, I think, enough thread to just sew this one last edge. I'm going to show you how to do that French knot again. So make sure you have a little bit of a tail on the end where the needle is. Pull your thread along your finger and cross it. And then going around one, two, three, four, five. Pull that thread down like that. Pinch on the top with your nail. Get your thumbnail on above the thread and then just push your needle through and then keep it nice and pinched there and wiggle and pull 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 and then before you're done you'll feel a little knot once again you're going to bury your end I don't know if you can hear those dogs barking behind me. Push, push, push. Pull it through. And then you're going to push this end into the fabric to hide it. You might need to take out one of your pins for a minute. All right, and start to sew. We've arrived at the end, so I'm going to go through one or two more times. And then I'm going to go through the loop and pull through the loop and pull. Now here's the tricky part. We're going to bury your end inside of your project so that that way you won't have this weird loose thread end. So find a space really close to where your last stitch was and wiggle your needle through and don't lose the needle but watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to have the needle peek out of here. Pull it out and then you see how when I pull it this side comes in we're going to pull and not too close to the fabric snip your end and then you can pull that back out and then your end of your thread is buried so that is your bean bag.